everybody. Thanks for clicking into this special edition of Sit Down with Ed Brown. Today we're going to be, we are actually live at the ECBRO conference here in Virginia. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, I, I, I was, I'm pretty surprised because I, I thought it was going to be a small event. This thing turned out to be a lot bigger, a lot better than, than even I thought it would be. Um, so it was, it was a great event. It's been a lot of fun. Still going on right now inside. I just came outside because you know me and I talk loud. So we wanted to kind of take a minute and kind of talk to some of the, the people who are involved. And we're going to start this off with talking to the MC of the event, Mr. Zach Stark. And uh, we call him Blimp, right? Yes, sir. All right, Blimp. Listen, a couple questions real quick. Number one, uh, not really a question, but a comment. You're doing a fantastic job as an MC. I've MC'd a couple Appreciate of these things. It. And uh, yeah, he's doing almost as good as I would do, but, you know, we don't. <laughs> So, Zach, what, what got you into this? I mean, how did you get a part of this event? Well, um, I think it was back in January. Uh, I just got done doing a uh, show on Backwards Investigations, and I get a message on my phone, and it's from Daniel. He says, are you planning on coming to the conference? I said, well, really, I hadn't planned on it. I ain't going to have no way of getting there. He goes, well, I really want you to be my MC. I said, are you kidding me? And I, he says, no, I'm I'm being straightforward. I said, well, I'm honored. I'd be glad to, sure. And uh, let me just run it by. Six hours later, I had his answer for him, and here we are today. The rest is history. Awesome, man. You're doing a good job. Now, you, you've done a lot of research yourself. You're from Illinois, southern Illinois, correct? Yeah. Right. And I actually, I, I was actually wrong because I, I mentioned to him yesterday, I thought he was from around here somewhere, but it turns out he's from southern Illinois. What do you find in there, man, on your research? A little bit of everything. Some days it's uh, uneventful. Um, it's mainly uneventful, but every now and then we strike gold. Um, whether it's audio, uh, sighting, or um, just really anything, a, a hair sample, possible feces sample. Um, but nine times out of ten, you ain't going to get nothing. You just got that 1% or that you're really going to walk out with anything. But, what got me into this um, it was actually my mom. She kept me interested in the old style uh, movies like with Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Wolfman. And I'm not talking about the new CGI Hollywood stuff. I'm talking 30s Depression era monsters. and uh, A man after my own heart. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's where it started and everything. And I'd always heard stories growing up about the hairy man of the woods. And, uh, of course, I've been really curious about... Uh, uh, the subject and everything and I've always been one of these cases where uh, if I find out about something I, and I'm left bewildering with all kinds of questions I want to know more that's it I just want to know more and whenever I had my first encounter whenever I was nine years old whenever I heard the scream of the Bigfoot at the time I was really into the Wendigo and I started doing a lot of report, uh, report studying and a lot of research and I thought I encountered a Wendigo until 10 years later, I heard an exact same sound on a recording on YouTube, and it matched the same sound that I heard that night. And uh, it started off trying to figure out and find out what it was I heard, and it started into an obsession, if you will. Uh, I'm wanting to know. I want to know more. I want to know more. And it got to the point where I'm reading Bigfoot sighted in southern Illinois, Murfreesboro, Illinois, Monroe Township, Chittyville, Illinois, Tuttle Bottoms and Doris Heights, Illinois. All places that I grew up in and never knew nothing about. And they're all within miles of my place. And I found out Bigfoot's not on the other side of the world in the Himalayas or China or in South America. They're usually going to be right in your backyard. And that's where I started the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters team. We uh, founded in 2015 um, a group of lifelong friends that I've been friends with since we were little kids. And we found out that we shared the same passion. And uh, it's, it's escalated from there. And, I mean, we've got so much no writing in the last three years. We really took off. We were really just going to take off uh, just investigating old cases around Illinois. But then we get people coming in from Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, wanting us to come investigate. And, I mean, I can honestly say if you told me three years ago that I would be where I am now, I would have said you were full of crap. I wasn't looking to get famous. I'm not looking to get rich. And it's just, I'm an, honestly, I'm a blessed man. I have you, Ed, as my friend. I have Daniel and Fred, Connie, and Dan Lynn home. And all you guys have been so good to me and everything. I'm a very blessed man. I have every one of you guys to thank for helping spur me on and, and uh, tutor me uh, whenever I need it. Well, I definitely appreciate that. And I know Dan does as well. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those, we, you know, when somebody does 
something like what we do, you know, and, and you, you, I've, I've listened to a lot of shows, you know, I've listened to a lot of people's shows, I've listened to a lot, and you have to have that knack, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as people think, you know, and, and, and you have that knack and you do a good job. And I was actually on his show myself once, um, way back when. I don't know why he hasn't invited me back yet. I think I talked more than he did, so it, you know, people don't like that. Well, I guess, when but. you went, you said I like long walks on the beach. That's kind of a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like long walks anywhere anymore. I'm getting too old. I'm telling you. But listen, Zach, listen, I, I appreciate you taking a minute to come out and kind of talk a little bit. We're going to be, by the way, just so you guys know, we're going to be talking to a lot of people, and this is going to be boom, 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 boom. That's what it's going to look like on here. However, it's going to take me a few minutes to go get somebody else, bring them back out. You know, going to get away from the, the noise. But Zach, you're doing a great job, man. Keep up the good work, and make sure if you didn't make it this year, I think I, I think you guys are going to be just as surprised as I am. Not that I didn't have faith in Daniel, but I'm telling you, this thing is bigger than I thought it would be, and, and I'm I'm very impressed, and I think it's a great event. And we're going to go grab somebody else. What do you think? Well, yeah, you'd be sure, and if you come out next year, I'm already set up to be a speaker for next year's event. So I'll be here next year. There we year. go. See, there's there's why we do this because there's that that little piece of information nobody knows yet. Mr. Zach's going to be Blimp. Yep. Blimp is going to be speaking next year here at the ECBRO uh, Virginia Conference, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing that. I'm, I'm sure I'll be here too. So I hope so. <laughs> I get around. <laughs> so anyway, what we're going to do next is we're going to go get somebody else, and we'll be right back. We're back. We just finished talking to Zach, and look what we have now. Mr. Ernest Solar. Yeah, Solar. Solar. Okay. How are you? Ernest, how's it going, man? I'm well. How are you, yeah, man? Good. I haven't had a chance to meet him yet until until today, and, or yesterday, actually. And and what a great guy, man. We've had a, we've had some good conversation. Yeah, uh, good conversations. He's got some great stuff in there, man. He's got these books for sale. Uh, talk about. I mean, it's like uh, fiction, but I guess it would be what real fiction. I guess you could say. Yeah, uh, I have two books. They're both fictional, um, but I take real stories and wrap fiction around them. Sure. And where can somebody find these books if they wanted to check them out? Uh, Spirit of Sasquatch is on Amazon.com. So Spirit Sasquatch, Amazon.com. Make sure you go check that out. Yeah. But let's talk to him now. So, so what, what's the books about? Where, where do you get your inspiration? Uh, dreams, actually. Dreams. Yeah, uh, Spirit of Sasquatch. I actually had a dream that my oldest son was skipping rocks with a Bigfoot by the river. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I was like, hey, that could be kind of a cool story. <laughs> and then it just kind of evolved from there. And it became this story about a boy that gets rescued by a Sasquatch creature and lives with him for a few years. And I wrote it in a way that if you know nothing of the topic, you would learn something. If you're an experienced field researcher like yourself, you would read it and be like, hey, I've experienced this, I've seen this, I've heard that. So, right. you know, I, I wanted to kind of mix it all together. Right. So, yeah. so now, what, what part of the country are you from? Where, where, where do you live? Uh, Northern Virginia. So, Northern. Northern, like, so he's not far from here. Yeah, not far. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, do you have, uh, have you been out? Have you, do, you, do you get out and research? Do you, so, I, yeah, uh, I've been to New Mexico, Colorado, um, but I do most of my research in like, Virginia, Maryland, Northwest PA. Um, so it's when I was uh, when I was writing Spirit of Sasquatch, I would I would go into the woods and pretend I was a Bigfoot, right? Right. right. Um, to kind of write those scenes, and so um, I wouldn't stay on the trails. I would I would go on like game trails or just wander through the thick forest sure, and just sure. you know look for odd things and found prints, found tree structures and things of that nature and kind of went from that. Well, that's cool because even you know even the police talk about you know you want to you want to catch a criminal, act like a criminal, you know, right. think like a criminal. Sure. So if you want to find Bigfoot. I can think like a Bigfoot. I think that's right. actually really good advice. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I think it's really about not really expecting anything, right? Just just go out, enjoy your time in the woods, enjoy your time in the forest, be smart, don't be afraid, and, and see what happens. And if something happens, great. Right. If something doesn't happen, hey, you were in the forest. It was cool. Oh God, you yeah. know? You got to look back at a video I made a couple years ago where I said the exact same thing. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I got right. this beautiful lake with a mountain behind me. Yeah. And I said the same thing. I'm like, I don't care. I don't even care right now if right. I get any big. But this is, are you kidding me? Look at this yeah, place, you know? Yeah. So uh, definitely good advice. And uh, you're going to be going on speaking today. Yes. And what did you just give us a little, I mean, what uh, are you talking about? Yeah, so Spirit of Sasquatch has a lot of, a lot of the woo in it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're an author and you're telling a story, you have a little freedom to like move through, right? Absolutely. And and it's not. Um, I do believe in the woo, but I think a lot of it's also our misunderstanding because we don't have that connection with nature anymore. And so something will happen, and we think it's magical, but maybe it's just our disconnect from it. So I in my talk today, I'm going to talk about 
that aspect, kind of bridging the reality and the woo together. Yeah. Um, it's because I believe in both. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just I kind of want to try to bridge that gap. Sure. So. All right. So look up Spirit Bigfoot. Spirit of Sasquatch. Spirit of Sasquatch. Spirit of Sasquatch. Look that up. You're going to find Ernest. Uh, you're going to find that he's he's a great guy who's he's fun to talk Thank to. You. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to make fun of him for what he was wearing yesterday. I'm not even going to bring it up. I just could, see, on. look, he's already laughing. It was a kilt. He knows. He knows kilt. already. Kilts are cool. I, yeah. Kilts are cool. Look, <laughs> he's calling it a kilt, but it wasn't plaid. So I think it was a skirt. No, it's a utility kilt. It's a utility kilt. Utility kilt. They're wonderful. They're great to go hiking in. You should try it. I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> We're not wearing a kilt. Come on. <laughs> Ernest, thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate man. it. Look, look, man. I know you're going to knock him down. I can't wait to hear your presentation. Thanks. Appreciate and, it. And uh, we'll, we'll check it out then. All, All right, right, bud. All right. Take care. All right, guys. Listen, I'll be back in a few minutes with somebody else. We're just going to keep bringing them out until we're done. Back in a minute. Ernest is gone. And guess who we've got with us now? We've got the one and only Mr. Tracy Arnold. Tracy, what's going on, man? How you going? Good. How about you, Ed? All right, man. You know, you know I've, I've, I've talked to you quite a bit. I got to know Nick. got to know you pretty well. Yeah, sure. And, Boom, man, here I am, finally get to meet you. Finally get to meet you. It was an honest, yeah. The guy named Ed Brown. Ed, yeah, his, Ed who? Yeah, that's what they keep saying, but they know who I am. Yeah. So, um, so Tracy, why, just real quick, man, you know, you're going to be talking today, right? Yes. yes. What are you going to talk about? Give us uh, a hint. Well, I'm going to really be talking about how can we identify a Sasquatch from bear, coyote, you know, from sounds to, to visuals, and plus my encounter personally with the Sasquatch back in 2015. That's awesome. I think that's great information. How, how, I mean, so give us a give us a clue. I mean, so how, how, how if you see something with hair in the woods, how do you distinguish that from a bear from a bigfoot? It's actions. Uh, you know, bear's actions is most of the time. You know, if some animal encounters a bear, you won't even see the bear. You'll, you'll, you'll hear something thrashing a little bit and go away. You mm-hmm. won't even see it. Right. And with a little noise. Uh, Sasquatch a little bit different. I believe when you come across a Sasquatch, and like my personal experience did, they're going to check you out before they leave. They're going, what's this guy doing? And then they're going to leave. You may get a glimpse of it. But then again, you might get it to behind the bushes and then they'll make out heads or tails with it. So really the, the, the fact that it is you know, your sight, what you put your eyes on is what you see. But the misidentification of bear and Bigfoot collide a little bit too much in this field. Uh, to me, people you think, are seeing bears. You think? Yeah. Sorry. To me, people are seeing bears over Sasquatch. Right. Uh, but they want to. They want to see. They want to see everything in Sasquatch. Right. My personal experience. There's things I don't share because I don't know what that was. Amen. Maybe a bear. Amen. So, I mean, and one video I did did post that. It showed me leaving from seeing an actual Sasquatch. Uh, you can see fear. I, I, I feel the fear now just talking about it. Sure. You know, sure. Seeing something that, okay, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to see this thing during the daytime. Right. This is only supposed to be happening in the evening time, late night, you know, sitting by a campfire or fishing in the dark, you know. But as far as, you know, you come on head to head with one like, you know, Roger and Bob did. A surprise. And you see the shaking. You you feel the heartbeat in your chest. You feel the fear, and then you leave. <laughs> right. That's what I did. Sure. So, you get that adrenaline, and, and, and yeah. It, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to be talking about. Today. Awesome. The, the fear. Awesome. The fear level. And 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 I think that's an important message to get out to people because, um, you know, and it kind of corresponds a little bit with what I talked about yesterday. You know, about being very critical of your own evidence. You know, right. and. Uh, you know, it, there, there's too many people out there being critical of your evidence. If you're going to put it out, be critical of it first, yeah. so they you can have a little first. Before yeah, somebody ex- else exactly. Them it gives them a part. Yeah, yeah, it gives them a little less, yeah. to, you know, to pick yeah. on you for. You know, exactly. so um, so just on a personal, how did you get started in this whole Bigfoot thing? What, what happened? Well, uh, buying a Bigfoot, uh, yeah, BFRO, Matt Money Maker, and all them was out in the woods chasing, chasing Bigfoot, wanting to prove Bigfoot to everybody in the world. So. Second episode, uh, I think he was in Ohio. Uh, a guy stands up in the uh, audience and says, I got this last night. It was like 30 feet behind of us, and he played it. And it was exactly what my dad and I heard back in the 80s while burning copper wire when it wasn't illegal. Right. <laughs> you know, and this is what we did back in the day, you know, make money to make sure. Make ends, make of course, money. of course. And uh, apparently we had aggravated it and had done it for three weeks. We couldn't figure out what it was. 
but the last night, you know, the first night, well, the first night we heard it, my dad says, probably a deer got here on the airspace. Okay. Well, this went on for like three weeks. The last night I asked him, yeah, it sure has taken a long time for that deer to die. He said, so I don't know what that is, and I really don't know what that is. <laughs> but this is what we heard, you know, off that episode from the Final Bigfoot, uh, Ohio. Sure. It really kicked it. Sure. And then you get, you know, you just kind of get into it knee deep, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Listen, Tracy, listen, thanks, man, for stopping in and talking to us for a few minutes. Can't wait to hear your presentation. Looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And uh, I'm going to be back here in just a minute with somebody else. You don't know who it's going to be yet, but it's going to be fun. See you in a minute. Keep it real. And he said, keep it real. A minute. But to me, that was like a long time because I had to go in there and grab somebody else. You're not going to believe who I just found. Miss Jen from She Squatchers. Yes, Jen Cruz from She Squatchers. Hey, everybody. Now listen, you, you guys you guys did a great job yesterday. I saw your presentation. It was awesome. You guys have a great booth, and you have a great um, team. You know, tell us a little bit about your team. Well, uh, it all started with Lauren Coleman. I did a, a radio interview with him on my show uh, a few years back, and I was so impressed with him and what he shared with me about Bigfoot, and I honestly didn't believe in Bigfoot at the time. And when he said he thought it would be the recipe for success in Bigfoot would be to send some women in the woods without men, guns, or dogs. I thought that was a great idea, and I, I jokingly said, hey there, big boy. Uh, and, <laughs> and, but by the end of the interview, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, this is a really, this is a really good idea. I, thought I seriously volunteered during the interview at the end, by the end. So I thought, you know, even if there isn't such a thing as Bigfoot, I'll get some good hikes in. It'll be fun. Sure. And uh, I was really surprised to find anything. But now I'm a big believer in Bigfoot just because of what we've found and experienced out on our own. So, well, you've got a little video rolling in there, you know, at your table, and, and I and I've watched that, and it's actually very interesting because you find a, a big um, hut, if you will. I mean, tell us a bit about that. What what'd you find, and, and, and tell us about it. Oh well, you know, I, I use uh, I'm a psychic medium, and so um, some of the techniques that I've used to help find missing people. Uh, I thought, I wonder if we could use those to help find Bigfoot too. So uh, I, I started using some of those techniques to, and scanning uh, satellite maps, looking, looking and asking if there was Bigfoot here, if there was any Bigfoot evidence we could collect here. And I got some answers on that, so I marked some locations on the map. And I had marked a location that looked like um, a scary Bigfoot face, a very aggressive male. And I was like, yeah, okay, right here. And then nearby, within 200 feet, I was, it was lighting up as Bigfoot evidence that we could collect. And that place didn't seem so scary, but the other place did. So when we went there, there was a trail that kind of ran between them I could see on the map, but I wasn't sure if it was a drivable trail. It was a barely drivable trail. And <laughs> barely drivable, yeah. I've been, I've been on those. Yeah, uh, it scratched up my car pretty well. <laughs> all right. See, when you're at a conference, anything can happen. Stuff happens all the time. Now we're getting away, and now she's backing up. Okay. Well. All right. So she's safe. We're safe. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Car. <laughs> <laughs> Game on. All right. All right. So uh, we went to this location, and then we found that we could drive it. Um, it, it was kind of like those old car washes that have the mops that come up over, on, over your car. Sometimes the trees were doing that to my car. And I, I, when we post videos of us driving through that, I bet you people watching are just cringing. <laughs> you hear it. You, you hear it scraping on your car as it goes down. I've, I've been there. I know. Exactly. Yeah, and, it's, and it's like, oh, crap, what am I doing on my paint job? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Just, just last month I posted a video of us going down this minimum maintenance road. And I think 1,100 people watched it on Facebook. It was funny. And I'm like, nothing's going on. There's no Bigfoot. I just said right. minimum maintenance road. And they that many people watched it. I suppose... They just wanted to see what's down those right. minimal maintenance roads. Sure, sure. They're pretty gnarly sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's got this great evidence. Now, where can someone find your, your videos and, and what you guys got going on? Well, we have a YouTube channel, but we haven't put a lot of it on there yet. Um, but you can find us at She Squatchers Official. Uh, look for that. The, there's two accounts there. One we lost access to, so don't worry about that one. But it's the one with the most videos on it. Um, we try to add them there, but there's some more videos on our Facebook page, so you can find us at She Squatchers Official on Facebook. Um, and always check out our website, SheSquatchers.com, for, you know, it's a landing page. You can find us wherever we are on there, too. Good deal. That's mm -hmm. She Squatchers. Now, you know, we've all heard about them. We've all, I got to meet them. It's awesome. 
Now, now tell me about your team, because there's only two of you here tonight. In fact, we're going to be we're going to be talking to the other one here in just a little while. So stay tuned for that. But tell us about your team. Jenna goes inside. <laughs> I, I know there's a joke there. I just don't know what it is, but I've been hearing that a lot the last few days. So, so tell us about your team. Who, who's on your team and, 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 and what are their skills? All right. So I'm the team leader and I'm the, the psychic medium animal communicator, remote viewer. Uh, and then I've got Jenna with me here at the event, Jenna Grover. And, and, and she's just our fearless trooper. And she's, she's got some intuitive abilities as well. Uh, but mostly she's fearless and adventurous and she's just ready to go. Jenna goes inside. And but, she's, but she is awesome. They're both awesome. Yes, yes. And so she's always willing to jump in there and climb the hill or go into the structure. And I think most people would be running the other way, to be honest. Yeah. She's the fearless one in the group. Uh, then we have Marlo Jane. Um, and, and she lives a little bit further away from us, so she doesn't get to come out with us as often. But she's a lot of tech support, too. Um, and then uh, Nikki Jordan. She's, uh, she's actually from the reservation that my mom comes from. And so she has a lot of native, native qualities that she brings to the table. Um, and a lot, she has access to, well, she, she's more fluent in the Ojibwe language than, than I am by far. And, and you'd be surprised how much wisdom is hidden in place names in the Ojibwe language. Everything in Minnesota is, is pretty much named from the old language of Ojibwe. And the way that that works is, uh, they would describe how you would interact with something, and that's what they would name it. Uh, so, for example, it, the Mississippi River uh, starts off in Minnesota, and when I was first taken there as a child, uh, I, I was taken to the headwaters, and it's this little trickle coming out of the ground, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's the headwaters of the Mississippi. I'm like, my creek is bigger than this. I don't, I don't understand what the big deal is. And it wasn't until I was a much older adult that I realized the Mississippi is a huge river that goes all the way down and dumps into the coast. I didn't, right. I didn't right. know that. I'm like, oh, I see why it's a big deal now. Sure. But to me, it was just a little trickle. Right. But if I had understood the Ojibwe language at the time, I would have known that the Mississippi means a great, it's a great river of many collecting of many waters. And it goes a long ways and eventually connects into a great body of ocean. Sure. And so sure. if I had known the Ojibwe language fluently, I would have known that just by its name. So we're, I'm thinking that sometimes there's clues hidden in place names if they're based on the Indian in the Ojibwe language. Cool. So she helps with that as well. So there's lots of things that she does. And then our newest member is Tammy Trichel. And I've worked with her before in the psychic realm. She's, she's a really strong psychic. Her, she's... She's also an animal communicator, but she sees auras all the time, like all, she doesn't shut it off. And so I'm thinking if Bigfoot is hiding, your energy field is about 20, sometimes 15 feet to 22 feet out away from you at all times. You can't hide that. Right. So I can't wait to take her out. She's just brand new. We're going to go out next weekend, actually. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there you have it from Jen Cruz, right? Yes. Jen Cruz herself, uh, the She Squatchers. And uh, Jen, thanks for stopping in and saying hi. And uh, thanks so much, and Jen. again, you did a great job yesterday. And we're looking forward to seeing uh, her teammate here in just a second. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say, Ed is wearing a marvelous necklace. That's right. Let's going to get that in here. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Let's see. Yeah. So it, it, I'm, I'm actually, that's kind of cool. So definitely, had, I, I, I didn't want to get a t-shirt with pink on it. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, now. So, <laughs> the manliest men wear pink. Manly men. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thanks so much. All right, so I'm going to be back in just a few minutes. Again, you don't know who I'm going to... It may not be Jen just yet. Jenna. Actually, it's Jen and Jenna. Won't be... But I'll be back in a minute. Later. Thomas, we're back. And, you know, you, we just talked to Jen of She, of she Squatches. She Squatchers. I'll get this right in a second. Now we have her partner who's here. Miss Jen, how's it going, Jen? Hi, it's going fabulous. Great, great. So, tell, tell me, how, how, how are you doing at this, this event? I mean, how, what, what does an event like this mean to She Squatchers? It means everything. I mean, the people that come here and the people that actually talk to us about Bigfoot, they're having a great time, and we are having just as great of a time. Not only that, they're sharing their stories, their pictures, so we're getting to see pictures that are amazing. In fact, people come to these places and these events, and if they don't, if they have some information they want to share but are too afraid to share it with people, they definitely come, come to us and they will, re, I mean, it'll all be nameless. So if they want something, they want to show everybody but they don't want to be part of it, it's completely confidential. We won't leak your name or anything. But, yeah, so people love doing that. They love bringing everything. And, uh, yeah, 
and see. And it's great to meet everyone. We love meeting people. So keep coming. Absolutely. You know, and I think, Jen, I think that's a really good point because Jenna, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. See, I don't want you guys to get these confused. This is Jenna. Mm -hmm. The other one is Jen. See, so I got to keep that straight. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I think that's a really good point you make about the people coming in to share their stories because a lot of people come to these events because they're curious. They're not necessarily believers. They're not researchers. They're curious and they want to tell people, hey, I, you know, I had this weird thing happen. I've already had a few people coming to me as well, you know, so, mm -hmm. so it is, it is cool to hear those stories and see those pictures and everything else. And, and a couple of them actually, I saw a picture today of an arm, you know, did you see that one? No, I didn't. Oh yeah. It's a, wow. it's kind of, kind of cool. So, and, 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 and I believe it's it, it very well could be one of a big, but I mean, I, I can't, it's definitely not a bear, so I don't know what it is. Well, I tell you what, I can't wait to show you a picture that uh, a gal dropped off. You didn't get to see it, I don't think, and uh -huh. it's so amazing. You can actually see facial features, so wow, it is amazing. We are. She wanted us to go ahead and share it and see what other Bigfoot hunters and other people in the Bigfoot sure. world think of it. So, yeah, I'm excited to show you as yeah, soon as well, we get it yeah, online. So we get back inside. So can I yeah. see it before we get online? Or you? Maybe. It depends on how nice you Come are on. to us. <laughs> see, it, 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 it always comes down to how nice I am. No, yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm nice enough to bring you out and have a quick little interview, right? Oh, gosh, yes. He is so wonderful. We just love him. We love Ed Brown. <laughs> yeah, you know, let me get that money out. I owe you now. <laughs> so I got to pay her for that. So, um, so, so we talked to Jen about, you know, kind of all the team members. Jen, yeah, Jen. Mm -hmm. You're Jen now. Okay, I'm so Jenna. I guess I can still get that messed up. Okay. <laughs> so, so we talked to Jen about the team members mm -hmm. and what everybody's role is and what they do. And she kind of describes you as kind of the tank. You know, you just boom, <laughs> run right in there. Tank is not the word she uses, it's what I'm using, just mm -hmm. so you know. So, uh, so, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's intimidating. <laughs> All right, so, so tell, I mean, wh what is it about this field that, that, that gives you that, um, lack of being scared and, and just makes you want to go do whatever you got to do? To be honest, you know, in the world of, in the world of cryptics and paranormal, I know there's ghosts, I've seen them, you know, and I've seen different things in the paranormal ghostly side. I've seen things appear on walls, like crosses, I've grown up in a haunted house, well, somewhat haunted. I mean, there would be um, anything from water faucets being turned on to things just waving like somebody just whacked them, you know. But um, I saw that, and I knew what that was about, so I know that's real. I don't know that Bigfoot is 100% real. I know now, like I really want to know. I believe now, when I started this team, I was actually a major skeptic. But ever since we found a hand, we went out with uh, Greg Yost, who mm -hmm. is known as Squatch Man. If you don't know who he is, sure. check him out. He's wonderful. Um, Greg Yost, man, peace. Yeah, you guys. Are... Shout out Greg. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we went there and we, we actually found a handprint and I did a lot of looking and smelling, and that there was the time when I changed my mind about my belief, because there's no possible way that that could have been anything else. Someone would have hit that log, and the sand would have fallen off. So not only was it fresh, but it also smelled like fish, like really fishy, and there's just too many things that fit together. And then along with all of the other evidence we found, sure. two plus two equals four sometimes. Absolutely. Unless you're an accountant, then it's two plus two equals whatever you want it to be. So, <laughs> or a lawyer. <laughs> or a lawyer. Yeah, right, right, lawyers. Okay. So anyway, Jen, listen, thanks for taking a minute to kind of come out and, and, and just take a second. Because I'm going to try to talk to as many people as I can. Jenna and Jen have been awesome. Listen, if you get a chance to look up She Squatchers, look them up. Check them out because I'm telling you, they're doing some great stuff. And, they, and it's about time they start getting some recognition for what they're doing because they're awesome. So sweet. Jen. Thank you. Jenna. Thank you. Jenna. Thank yes, you. Sarah, thank you so much. Jenna, whatever. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to be back in just a minute with somebody else. Who knows who we're going to drag out of there? Look, see there? There's the event place right over there. We're going to drag somebody out in just a minute. We're going to talk to somebody else in a minute. And we have more. I've already showed you guys all these other speakers. It's been a really good time. This time, I'm bringing in, check this out, Baltimore Galvin. How's it going, Galvin? Doing great. Doing great. Yes, sir. See, so, so what does an event like this mean to you? To, uh, for me, it brings uh, it brings out hope. Basically, is for a lot of people who actually had Bigfoot experiences have have the guts to come up here and talk to us and talk to the people around here like that. They can tell us their experiences because not too many people uh, come out there to actually tell us what's going on in their lives and they actually seen Bigfoot because a lot of people think that they're crazy or drug addicts or alcoholics. 
but it's good for the public to know that there's people out there that are willing to listen to their stories. And have you had um, a lot of people approach you with their well, stories? Yes, they? sir. I had a bunch of them. So without giving away a name or anything, kind of tell us about one. You can give us a short version, but it's just you know, just tell us kind of about one of the one of the stories you heard that you really liked. My story that I really liked, uh, um, it's real good collecting stories, especially uh, from older people, uh, especially when they're ill and stuff. Uh, I had a, fr uh, a friend that, uh, that actually passed away, but I'm going to mention his name anyway, but it'll be all right. His name is Mr. Abrigo. And uh, he went up there and told me a story that he was working on this house. Uh, uh, he was on the roof and he was sharpening a pencil and he noticed in the field that there was actually a uh, Bigfoot walking across the field and, and uh, uh, a guy jabbed him on the ridge he goes, Felix, what's that? And then they're looking at this creature and it's walking down the, walking down the, uh, uh, this coastal field and the animal stops and looks at him and, uh, and the animal just kept on waving his arms back and forth until it jumped into the creek bottom. And, uh, and the other gentleman looked at Mr. Abrigo and told him, hey, uh, that wasn't human, was it? And uh, Mr. Abrigo said, no, it wasn't. He goes, would you like to go over there to go check him to find it again? And Mr. Abrigo goes, nope, let him go. He's going his merry way. Wow, so, yeah. that's, a, that's a great story. Yeah. So you had the opportunity today to speak. Yes, sir. Tell them what you talked about. I talked about, uh, well, it was my very first time speaking. I was very, very nervous. Which is odd. Look how good he's talking. I mean, the, the guy's like a natural. He's like speaking so well here. He's, he did a great job, by the way. He did a great job. But go ahead and let you. Yeah, and uh, there's some times when uh, me personally, when I was up there, I had so much to talk about, and then I just went blank. <laughs> so, um, yeah, being a speaker up here, and uh, it was amazing. It was my first time doing it, and uh, I'm pretty sure there will be some more opportunities for me to speak. But, uh, but it was great. Uh, you know, I talked about experiences. I talked about a Bigfoot hut that was actually found in Berkeley, Texas. Uh, and I talked about a, 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 some encounters that other people had, and that was a, a great thing for me. It was, it, it was a great honor for me, for me to be here as well. Awesome. Well, listen, I just found out, I found out a little while ago that actually he goes by Baldy, right? Right. He goes by Baldy, so forget the whole, I, I probably screwed up his name, and, I, and I'm sorry yeah, if no I did, problem, but I, you no know, I, you guys know me, I don't, I'm not that guy. So anyway, listen, man, thanks for taking a minute to talk no, to us. I'm no glad. problem. It was very nice meeting you, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to meet, and I'm yes, sure sir. we will meet again. And thank you very much for having me. Hey, it's all right, man. Thank you. All right, guys, I'll be back in a minute with somebody else. You never know who it's going to be. Might be something. Who knows? Back in a minute. I'm back. You know, we've, the list keeps getting longer and longer. You could say better and better. I don't know. This time I think it's not so good. I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm bringing in, check this guy out, Mr. Fred Caney. Fred, what's going on, man? I'm well, just chilling, man. We just come up here to do some, uh, uh, sell some stuff for and do the conference here. We camp now at the Cold Rose here right now. And we got hot action in here. Good deal. Yeah, good we deal. Had, we had some people out there last night. And uh, we want to see them. We want to see them. Okay, I'll see them. I'll do it. I'll take the flashlights and everything. We're going to see the eyes. And by the time this old couple rolled in, within five minutes, we had squatches everywhere. Over to the right of us, there were six squatches sitting there. I'm watching in. We had a 10 footer to the right to the uh, left of the roof. And people can't figure out why we see so many squatches. We're the right spot to the time. It was just Shandor Valley on off the Bridge Parkway over there. You got Nelson County, it's not pleasant for the Parkway Bounce State Parkway. You had the Blue Ridge Parkway and come down in my area. So we got person business. Sure. Squatches do come back to work. To get birth or for the folks to get birth. Awesome. Every year. Good deal. Yeah. So so I I know I've heard a lot of stories I've heard from several people and, and just so you know it's not just Fred who's told me today that you know they've had activity last night and I think that's really cool. But um as far as like the conference goes, I, I know you, you were a pretty big part of this conference because you did the Bigfoot walk, right? Yeah. He seems a little apprehensive about this. I don't know why, but I'm gonna dig. We're gonna find out why. So what's up? I had to have the big walk, big foot walk. The thing about wood. Okay, okay, thank you. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what else to ask. Let's see if I don't. No, no, really. Okay. Uh, everybody was uh, under the impression that I was going to do a night hike. I don't do night hikes. Right. You don't have to leave my camp. Right. You sit on your butt. Sure. Because where my camp is situated, they come across the road. We got two guards. And what they do is they stand there until all the ones are across, then they go on back one on and go hunt. Now, if you do a night hike, you're not going to see them because they're across the road. Right, right. Now, last night, 
They didn't come from across the road, they come from behind us, through the birthing beds. There were, we know that there were five born last night. Huh. Three females and two males. And the 218 footers are brothers. And uh, we call them John and Henry. And they come, Henry come, I mean, John come from the left. Uh, Henry come from the right. Uh, and matter of fact, all the squatches come from the back up. Right. And during the day, they are back there protecting the birthing area. Right. People say, what is a birthing area? You know, there's different types. I've seen different types all over the United States, Canada, and even my cousin in Ireland has got pictures of birthing beds. My area, they, they go, the mountains are thick with mountain laurel. I mean, major. Just gotta see if you can. I don't know if this is gonna have any, do any justice to the mountains. You can see some mountains behind me, behind us. It is actually very beautiful here, by actually, the way. Actually, you got mountains so, all the way around. Yeah, you. yeah. I don't know that it's coming up very good on the on the video, but but they're they are there, so yeah. it's all right. The Sandal Valley is a ten million year old volcano. <laughs> if it goes, you got uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Pennsylvania, probably up in New York. It's going to be just coming off the face of the earth right. if, the, if the Sandal Valley blows up. Sure, That's where it is. Sure. You know, but people don't realize, you know, that these guys, you know, these creatures, are just like us. Right. In '91. I worked at NIH in Rockville, Maryland, National Institute of Health. It's government owned. And I, went, I got up one weekend and I went to my area and I found blood, hair, and saliva. Took to NIH, got spent three days. I, he said, What? Well, I said, I ain't gonna tell you what it is. I said, Just do it. I'll leave it to you later. Three leg gave me a piece of paper and he said, All I can tell you is it's 98% human and 2% Neanderthal. Hmm. And I got photographs of squashes that look exactly like a. You know, a um, and then fall. You take mm -hmm. Patty, you see the thick brow line. Sure. Cheek, sure. jaw, chin. Right. Left lip. Right. Let's see if some else people don't know. I don't think they're paying pay attention. When Patty was walking, she was dragging her left foot, carrying something heavy. MK Davis cleared her up, found out she had a baby attached to her. And right around her arm, right around her back waist. Everybody said they sent a wrinkle away here, frozen out there. That was a baby squash one there like that. Hmm. But it was so small, no one ever seen it. Yeah, I, d I haven't noticed it. Yeah, I haven't noticed it. And, you know, and the squashes around here, you know, they're like they're in the family members. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, aunts, sure. and But they, but I don't use science. The closest I get to science is archaeology. Right. Because when you find a structure, you go like my area is Cherokees. I go to the church of glyphs. I match the picture I got and the glyph up. It gives you a word. Research the word while you're researching. You get the words start catching your eyes, right then down. Before you know it, you're going back in time, and then, you're, then the evidence starts falling forward. Right. And by the time you get back to the present day, you find exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Well, guys, listen, man, that's Fred Caney. I'm telling you, man, this guy's this guy's got uh, some activity going on. Um, sounds like last night I missed out because I went back to the hotel and crashed. So I'm sorry. Man. A lot of people missed out last night, <laughs> but the funny thing was. And that elderly lady, the, the people that had the little shit suit. Yeah, yeah, the little dog, yeah, yeah. As soon as they got there, it wasn't two minutes. He said, let's go around here. I said, okay, walk around there. There was one of the temper standing right there. A minute and a half later, there were six of them, his wife and uh, Howard, and two girls on open here, were sitting there going, ah, oh. there's six of them standing there looking. Look, look, he was like that, had little eyes, like that, little yellow eyes. Okay. You know, and we had one side temper standing next to me. We saw a juvenile right there. He got the one blink. So he went to try and say, hey, honey. But when he did, this is why he started walking. <laughs> and he was looking at me. And I grabbed him. Oh, man. I threw him around when he did. When that squatch swam, I stuck a bolt in. <laughs> but his thing, the old man didn't realize. He didn't hear him. When they run, sometimes you can hear him, sometimes you can't. Right. So he was right on the creek, baby. You should have heard him grab one all the stuff. Right. Hear it. But they're so fast. The squatch is so fast. They can catch a deer running wide open. <laughs> when they hide, they stand in the open. Right. I proved that by walking 25 feet from Connie in the woods, like I'm dressed, to take a picture. Right. I post on Facebook and said, well, who's that? They said, what, just nothing in this picture. Right, right. And she told me. Well, actually, it's funny he says that because uh, earlier this month, Dan and I were in Oregon, and we were up there for 11 days and 10 nights. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a little experiment just like that. He set the video camera up. Mm -hmm. Dan had his back. He was facing the camera. Mm -hmm. I went around the pond. wasn't very far away. The pond's not very big. Probably about the length of 
Probably did that telephone pole. Yeah. And I stood out. I wasn't ducking down, hiding. I would just stand just like this somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't find me. We did it four times. Four times he couldn't find me. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Dan, you know. You know you were like saying, I'm old eagle eye, Dan. I'll catch him. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't see me not at all. And 9% of squatches hide in the open. Daniel went into my area with me and Connie. He's videoing me and Connie, right? For some reason, he pans back and about from here to that wall right there, that little post pillar right there. There's he videos something that little that, mm -hmm. that little pillar right there in the middle. That's how far he was away. There you go, Daniel didn't realize it, but he videoed a juvenile squatch sitting there, sitting down with his hands across his legs, mm -hmm. looking right dead at it. Me and Connie were saying, Man, they are close, they are right, real close. Right. But he when he panned back, he zoomed in for five or ten seconds. So this video said, What we got? got a juvenile squatch mm -hmm. That's the first time he's ever realized that. He is actually facing a Sasquatch in every Right, room. right. Well, I'm telling you, they're, they're really elusive. Listen, Fred, thanks, man, for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Uh, we're we're going to get around. We're going to, I think we've got one more we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, one more, and I'll be back. So you guys, just hang tight for just a minute. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, man, I am tired. I'm wore out. I've been chasing this guy down. He's been so darn busy the whole time that he's hard to get a hold of. And look at this. Look at this facility, by the way. So that's a... Uh, that's all pretty cool. I mean, it was, a, it, was a, it was a really good thing. So I'm going to bring him in now. You know him as Daniel Benoit. Hey, guys. How all you right. guys doing? <laughs> Listen, you know, the, the, the guy actually knocked it out of the park. Um, Daniel, I'm going to be the first one to say, I'm sorry, man. I didn't doubt you, but I didn't think it was going to be what it was. I, you you, you I, did a great job, man. I tell you what, I was I had my doubts as well. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. This is especially being a first-time event. Right, I, right. I didn't know what to think. I really right. did. You know, it was... You know, I knew there was a lot of work involved. Sure. Trying to get everything together, the funds, Absolutely. people, you know, and, you know, it was unpredictable. Well, you had a, you, I mean, you had a lot of really good speakers here. I mean, you know, we were, we unfortunately missed Ron. I, I wanted to get Ron to do this as well. Um, unfortunately, Ron left before I even knew it. So I was uh, kind of surprised. I, I shocked. I was like, ah, dang it, you know. <laughs> so, but it's okay. But Ron Moorhead was here. Um, he had, you know, the She Squatchers, which you've heard from. I mean, Baldy. Uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, you know, you Absolutely. had some, some really good speakers. You had good speakers here that weren't even speaking. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. That's, uh, so the, the, you know, the, just the attendees were awesome. And I, and I want to say real quick that on this one, the Q&A, the audience participation, was probably the best group of questions yeah. I've heard at any conference. Absolutely. And I've been, you know, I've been to a few, you know, and... Uh, so, so definitely thank you guys. Anybody who came and was asked questions or didn't ask questions, but they're here. Listen, that's awesome. Thank you, and uh, you guys did it. You guys knocked out the park. So, Daniel, we've talked about this year. We've talked to a lot of your speakers. What's next? Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of us are already talking about 2019. Um, you'll start hearing a little bit about that coming here within the next few months. Um, you know, we're gonna take a little break and enjoy our time here. Um, you know, we still got summertime here, so we're gonna enjoy ourselves. But I'll tell you what, um, I've actually had some interaction from one of our, uh, a group of our guests. Actually, um, I, I wanna say hello to Susie Jane. Give a shout out to Susie. Uh, her and her family, they were one of our largest turnouts. And, awesome. and uh, you know what, um, not just her, but we've had other people that are actually approach me, not just complimenting this event, people asking that, and actually, hoping that we do this again which i told them and i gave them a promise and i'm promising everybody else this will go down 2019 bigger and better uh we had our first day was a blowout it was seats were packed and we had people still oh, all the seats are packed we had everything that was going on here people all over wall to wall and yeah, yeah check this place i'm gonna kind of yeah. you keep talking i'm just gonna turn around oh, here yeah, real quick. Absolutely. Yeah. and the other thing is um you know we got we'll have live entertainment coming in the following year um, we're going to have everything you can probably think of available. Um, we're going to have speakers that, every, you know, a lot of the speakers we plan on having next year, mm -hmm. a lot of them will be known, some will be unknown. Okay. Uh, and that's part of why we're doing this. We want people from all walks of life, like we did this, you know, mm -hmm. this weekend. Right. And, uh, you know, so everybody will get a different insight, you know, hear different things. And so that way, you know, they could draw their own conclusions. They're not going to be able to love it. You know, we're not forcing anybody to believe anything. Sure. You know, you know we're going to get everybody to lay it all out on the table and, you know, give the uh, audience and everybody who views this and attends this a chance to ask questions and, and to interact, you That's know. Fine. 
So you can have a drink if you want. So you know, um, you know, uh, just as far as to the you know our upcoming year. <laughs> Here's my daughter. So yeah, 2019. Um, she's, steal she's stealing his pop. <laughs> it's okay though. She almost took mine. I had to put a stop to it. I'm like, listen, put it down. <laughs> kind of how I said it. Uh, oh, by the way, my daughter's been a great help. She's been a great assistant in this. And uh, but um, you know what? I got a lot of support behind this. A lot of people pulling for me. Um, one of our speakers, um, you know, them and their sponsors are. Um, you'll see them here. Ohio Night Stalkers. They were a major asset to this event. Uh, Dr. Kimberly McGeorge from North Carolina. Thank you very much for your, you know, your support and your donation with your, uh, you know. And Big Truth Productions, to sit down with Ed Brown, this man right here. You know what? I thank you for coming here, by the way. Oh, stop. You know? <laughs> stop. Come on. Stop. No, it oh, was, it was, you know, I'm glad I did. It was fun. Yeah. And, and you know what? I Probably what I liked the most that I found surprising, all right? That's kind of a weird way to put that in it. <laughs> I liked this the most because it was surprising is what I should say, but was the, the, the adversity you had on stage. You know, it oh, wasn't, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I actually expected... Um, Everything to be flesh and blood, everything to be serious, you know, scientific, blah, 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 this and that. But it wasn't. You know, he, he had different views, Absolutely. different angles, and everybody was welcomed. I mean, the, the crowd was freaking awesome. You know, the, the attendees, by the way, I'm going to say it again. If I, if I didn't get a chance to personally say hello to everybody, I'm sorry. I wanted to. I tried to. I probably yeah. said hi to most. Right. Yeah. I probably got 300 of them. Okay. So there's probably another 100 or so that I didn't get to. Yeah, you only got 300. It sounds like you missed the other 1,000. The other 1,000, yeah, yeah. It, it was busy. It wasn't that busy. But no, he hey, I can exaggerate here. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So um, so you said a minute ago some of the speakers next year will be, you know, public. Some of them will be kind of private. Yeah. Uh, and are you going to, are we going to, like, are we going to tell everybody that I'm speaking next year or are we going to keep that private? Well. See, do you see how his face? He's like. I don't even know what to say. I'm like, I think hey, we just spilled the beans. I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, and for the record, I have not been asked to speak next year, so it's okay. But but I guarantee you, he's going to have a great list of speakers, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So well, I am looking for volunteers for the Duncan booth. Dan, 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 Dan Lindholm should come to Virginia. Dan. That's I, I'm going to go ahead and volunteer Dan Lindholm right now for next year's Duncan booth. Absolutely. You have a Duncan booth here. Dan Lindholm will be here. We will work on that. We will get one. We'll find, there's a there's a will, there's a way. Yes. <laughs> and That's everybody here seems pretty athletic. I think they're going to hit that a lot. <laughs> I don't know. You won't have to worry about me. I mean, my baseball days are long gone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so you, I mean, I, and, and all seriously, yeah, I, and again, I, I want to say it again. I mean, seriously, you knocked it out of the park. I mean, it was a lot bigger and better than, than I thought it was going to be. And, and it's not that I thought, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I thought it was going to suck. Right. I'm just, I just saying I thought it was going to be much more small scale. Right, um, absolutely. And it, and it just, it was really, really good. And I, yeah. I think next year's going to be even better. Well, I'll tell you what, to be honest with you, yesterday to start off with, I mean, with the, when I saw the crowds filling in, we had minor technical difficulties on the stage with the mics, yeah. the audios, yeah. everybody getting their presentation set up. Yeah. Um, it all fell into place. Everybody pulled together to make it happen. And you know what? Trust well over drop. You know, I mean, I had a lot of interaction with the, the attendees and the other guests. And um, I was able to fill in and ask a lot, answer a lot of questions, you know, based off of my booth and my present, you know, what I had presented on, over here. And, and uh, you know, everybody got to hear something from everybody um it wasn't all the same thing that's how it should be um you know we're not like some of these other conventions that invite the same people year after year we're going to try to mix it up that's what we're here for we're bringing the community together you know and then we have actually you know i believe we actually reached people that were non-believers that just we got the curiosity out of them with our advertising our promoting the newspapers the you know Fox News had put it out there. Um, I mean, people are seeing everything. They're still seeing it in the papers today. And um, well, the TV station was here today. Yes, they were yeah, here today. The TV station was here today. Absolutely. Doing the they were supposed to be here yesterday, but they had a major issue uh, with another situation that was priority. It wasn't so, another gunman, was it? No, it was actually the same. We're in the Virginia. You never know. It does yeah. have something to do with the hospital, though. The insurance, uh, local <laughs> hospital, stuff about <laughs> the insurance policy. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Crazy stuff. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, so. But um, I'm glad they did come out here, and uh, they interviewed a few people, and uh, we had another local uh, news uh, person here that was here yesterday. She interviewed quite a few of us, and it's an online news um, um, 
network. So we'll all check that out. If I find information on that, I'll share that. Uh, James Madison University students were here. Uh, they were actually doing a, a lot of note taking interviews for their their university paper, which is awesome. Uh, oh, talking about universities, a couple of our speakers were from universities, and yeah, we had a professor. Absolutely, yeah, one was Darby? a professor. Yeah, yeah. Darby Orcutt yeah. no, from North Carolina State yeah. University, and Mr. Ernest Solar from Mount St. Mary's University in Harper Ferry uh, here in West Virginia. He's a professor. Yes, I didn't know. That. Yeah, See, we, we were talking a little so, while ago. And, you know, I saw him wearing a kilt yesterday, or skirt, Yeah, and, I, and I didn't, I, I teased him earlier, we did this earlier oh, okay. with, with, with him, and I was kind of teasing him about wearing a skirt yesterday. Uh, so, <laughs> I didn't know professors wore skirts. When I first met Ernest, uh, it was actually at a Sasquatch convention here in Virginia, down in Roanoke, at, right. the, uh, at a brewing company. And, uh, I'm kidding, Ernest, so, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, not so, Ernest, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Ernest. Yeah. Ernest. Yeah. Man, I'm, so, um, I tell you, he's quite, you know, quite the guy. You know, great guy. Very, yeah, great very guy. outgoing, friendly guy, very intelligent, and you know, great family guy. You know, uh, he, yes. His, uh, his wife and youngest child came out here uh, to support him, and uh, yeah, it's great having him out here. I really appreciate that, and along with everybody else. If I'm missing anybody, to thank um, you know, I really appreciate everybody. The support from everywhere. I mean, I had support from people that just came out here to just to check it out, you know, and, and there's people that want to join forces and join with us and really make this big niche. Here, so. And do. And Night Stalkers, you know, I missed you guys too. I know you guys left yesterday before. Uh, I know you guys left last night. I didn't start doing this till today. So unfortunately, I didn't get to them either. Mm -hmm. But they were, they were freaking awesome and they were fun to hang out with. And uh, they actually sent me a bunch of pictures from yesterday on, and everything. Oh, okay. So it was awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it was really cool. Everybody, I, I'm not kidding you, man. Everybody was just freaking great. I mean, it was, it was awesome. So, um, but Daniel, listen, man, let me know if you yeah. need anything. We'll, we'll be you know, happy to, to talk and help you out anything, any way we can again. And uh, and uh, I'm telling you, it was a lot better. It was really good. So it was fun. Absolutely. And uh, I will be posting pictures on Facebook and uh, throughout all the social media, Twitter, um, you know, and then I'll have some video footage I'll be posting on my YouTube channel, uh, Bigfoot Zone. So check that out. It's Bigfoot Zone with DCBRO in parentheses next to it. Um, so yeah, I'll get that uploaded soon. Um, and again, uh, right on my own timeline. I'll share it in several groups. I got a lot of pictures of the event and the turnout. You can go to our Facebook page, our event page of the ECBRO First Annual Virginia Bigfoot Conference. A lot of information and posts will be on there. I'm sure you'll see others that will be sharing photos and tagging others in it. So um, there's a lot to look on, uh, check out. So so what are you, you going to do? Like you're going to make another one now or are you going to change the name to the second annual? Easy. Well, um, because now you got see, see, you tied yourself down by saying first annual. Well, it was. So now, you're now, right. Now, now you're stuck. You're well, stuck. This is one thing. Daniel, you know, there's no way out of it now. Well, we have, an event, we have like an event. You're like in a portal, man. <laughs> it's The whole event now is poop in the portal. It's gone. You can't change that on the Facebook page. Man. Well, uh, this is what we got. Uh, we have a. We have a <laughs> He's got an answer. Okay. I'll yes, just, I do. I, I have an okay, answer. Ahead, Tell me if this justifies right, the situation. Okay, okay. I have an official website. It is the Virginia Bigfoot Con .com. Okay. So, and then on the, once you go into the website, I do specify, uh, know if, you know, note that this is ECBRO. Gotcha. Sponsored gotcha. by the ECBRO. Okay. This is our event. So, well, the website's great. Yeah. But what yeah. are you going to do about the Facebook page? Well, Virginia Bigfoot Con. ECBR, we're going to drop first. We're not going to add second in. I'm just giving him Virginia, more time. Uh, he's, he's all worried about this. He's like, crap, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Daniel, seriously, it was a lot of fun, man. Thanks for taking a minute to talk to us. And, uh, Absolutely. And uh, let the people know, I, I, again, congratulations. And uh, I think I think this is the start to a really good big conference. I mean, this, this it was it was, uh, it was was really good. So. Yeah, I believe it's the making of a beautiful dynasty, you know? <laughs> I don't right. know if that's the right, right way to put it, but... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so definitely, man, take take a minute, go to the websites you mentioned, uh, go to the Facebook page, go to check them out, like them, see what's going on, see what happened this year, check out what happens next year, and uh, what's going to happen next year, and it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Absolutely. All right. Um, we'll be talking on Squash Your Own Radio. Uh, we'll be talking over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Squash Your Own Radio is also found on Blog Talk Radio. You can find the links everywhere. Uh, we're not, it's not easy to uh, find, uh, it's not easy, it's not hard to find, excuse me, <laughs> not hard to find. Okay, um, I don't know what he means. <laughs> so yeah, Squash Your Own Radio, Google it, whatever you got to do. We go live every Friday night at 10, p uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you, you, you realize that we pretty much have the same followers, so it's like well, yeah. uh, anybody who, they already know you, they, they already know where to find them. How many subscribers you got on your channel? Uh, thousands. 
Oh, really? About 5,000. I'm catching it. I got 13, 1,400. <laughs> I'm way behind. I'm about half of you. You know, the, but you know what? <laughs> you know what? That's going to change because this conference is is just going to build that. I'm telling you, yeah. next year it's going to be even bigger. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I mean, pretty soon. And you guys, like I said, I showed you the space. Um, you're going to fill the space up. Yeah. You know, so uh, hopefully next year they don't have a wedding or whatever that was over there. Yeah. And uh, we'll yeah. get, we'll, we won't have that problem. Uh, but you know, <laughs> seriously. Daniel, thanks, man. Thank you again. Right. It's been a great pleasure. I'm, and again, thank you for coming out too. And so. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I got to, I had a, actually got to speak at this conference as well, and uh, I talked a lot about being critical of your own evidence, uh, which uh, I thought was a, I thought was a good message, and, and, and I, you know, I think it's a good message to anybody about you know sharing. You've got to share, but you have to make sure what you're sharing is share worthy. You know, and it's uh, and it's it's important. Right. You know, so but it was a lot of fun. Maybe we can get Bob Gimlin up here next year. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. You hear that, Russell? <laughs> we talked about this before, Russell. <laughs> you know, I, I'll tell you what, man. You, 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 just reach out to him, and I, yeah, Bob. And Bob, I love the guy. Yeah, I love the guy. Mm -hmm. He's my. I mean, he's my idol. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, we get Bob up here. Hopefully, he gets Bob up here. I don't know why I keep saying we. I, like, I have to. I'm not. One it, more thing. A lot of people were asking me if finding a Bigfoot crew was going to be here, Mount Moss or what. We will have celebrities up here next year. We will announce them one way or another. We'll find, we're going to find a way. We're going to work it out. Um, again, I already have people that want to support us. Um, we're going to make something happen. So be on the lookout. Follow us. Stay, pay attention. And uh, if you have questions, just look at the website. People like asking me questions when I post it right in front of their face all the time. It's <laughs> Just pay attention and follow everything. That's all I have to say. It gets nerve-wracking to repeat myself after I post it. So, so where's it going to be next year? <laughs> With the event? I'm joking. Somewhere in Virginia. I'm sure someone. Else. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, thanks for clicking in, and I'm glad you guys watched. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, we got to talk to a lot of the speakers. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, talk to Daniel, talk to, you know, even Fred Caney. We even got whole oh. Fred Caney aside and talked to him a little while ago. Very awesome. So, uh, yeah, so we we covered the gamut. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I hope you guys have as much fun watching this as we had being here. I'm sure you won't, but I hope you do. And we'll talk to you later. God bless. Ow. Keep us watching. Whoop. Black messes. Evil minds that plot destruction. Fuck the roar of death construction. In the fields of bodies burning. As the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind. Brainwashed my hind. Oh, Lord, yeah.